when we think about confirmation bias, it's um, it is uh, from an evolutionary biological perspective, it is important to be efficient. We um, uh, if um, we, we should have a map of our environment which we move in, and that map should not require much effort on our part, and so therefore we sort of form it. It's developmentally, it, it's um, it is something, and, and the very basis of these maps we have, they're old. I mean, you know, um, from an attachment theory perspective, for instance, our internal working model is usually built by six months of age. Right. So our relational maps are wired in very, very, very early. Yeah. So and. From that, you can make the assumption all other things are, are you know, are, are built. To, um, from a psycholink perspective, if you want to go back to Freud, why not go back to Freud? Yeah, you uh, know, we've uh, been there a few times before. It's not a problem. It, is. Uh, it seems to have some explanatory power. Wait, wait, so it, let's, it, stay, good, good. let's stick with that. Yeah, Freud always said that you know that if you wanted to think about you know, um, he, he surmised that thought really wasn't necessary. Even if we were capable of some form of nascent or proto thought in the womb. It wasn't necessary because there was nothing to think. Everything was given to us. We're, we're in a state of uh, that homeostasis is maintained for us by an external source, i.e., mom. But the minute you're born, you have these this feeling of hunger, and um, the bottle or the breast doesn't always arrive on time. Mm-hmm. And so you have to begin to be able to contend with and be on calls as the no thing, the thing you want that's not there. And there begin thought, language, ideas. You begin to point to the things you want. It's the basis. It's the uh, relational contact, uh, thinking, all that sort of stuff begins at this this uh, this emergence into an environment that you have to begin to maintain your own homeostasis. Mm-hmm. And so, the um, the bare the bones of our confirmations um, are laid down very early. Okay. Okay. By the way, I wasn't breastfed. It's, it's obvious. Obviously. Yeah. Um, so, so yes. This, but thinking and thoughts. I mean, that that's a, a part of who we are. That's our consciousness. I mean, that's how we tend to communicate and operate, and we process information and cognitively, and then respond to things. But see, in our BM world would say things that like that. We do very little thinking, and and there, there's okay. some uh, in, in in cognitive science. Oh, well, I know research. some of those people yeah, too. Yeah, by the way, I, just, yeah, you know, I know how they sorry, voted. Just, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> 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 Try not to point any fingers around here. All right, That's go ahead. Bad. But uh, the idea is that that you know that um, that maybe we don't think anywhere near as much as we think we do. Wow. That. Um, that it is often um, we have the illusion, and a lot of uh, cultural theorists talk about this. That we um, there is the illusion of free uh, free will, the illusion of choice. Um, a wonderful right. example is I was listening to a podcast earlier about um, recycling, sure, and the idea that um, um, uh, we are now held responsible for the plastic we need to recycle. Whereas the corporations that do 99% of the pollution are off the hook, we, we, we we've moved this this to okay, man, you guys got to recycle, but nobody points the finger at the you know, uh, so there's no so, in fact they get tax breaks and there's right. so <laughs> Even more so in the breaks. act you you think you are doing a good thing, you think you are thinking in recycling and there's certainly nothing wrong with saying it's a good thing. Okay. But it's not really the sort of thought you need to have. You're not truly thinking the problem you have. You are just acting in a way that doesn't allow you to have those sorts of thoughts beyond what have. Like, okay, what do I really need to do to be able to have an impact on this? Yeah. I may need to organize in some ways and to be able to address larger concerns. Okay. Um, all right, so I need to separate that out a little bit because thinking is this flow of thoughts and but you're saying the actual things that we think, having a belief about mm-hmm. something, finding something out, using science to figure something out, mm-hmm. uh, that we miss the mark, mm-hmm. but we're still thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, it almost sounds like you're just saying we're, we're not thinking. Um, well, these in would a be assimilative way, thoughts. This is thinking in the service of maintaining a, um, a repetitive an automatic homeostasis. It is not thinking in the sense of growing a mind. Um, the book that I was telling I was I've been reading is called Mental Growth, and it's the idea that you know we have to over time grow the mind that we have. Um, I, I think I've said this before. Mm. I have a 12-year-old son. I have never been the father of a 12-year-old son, so I have to develop the mind of a 12-year-old 
a father with a 12 year old son's mind right. and so at each stage just as he's growing i'm also having to grow to be able to, to to be in dialogue with him and that continues to happen i was listening to um, um something earlier with a 97 year old philosopher he's in he's going to die soon mm-hmm. and he was talking about how what it was like for him to a have to develop a mind that has to to contend with a body that really doesn't work anymore right and a mind that is about to end and he has to think that and maybe an assimilative thought that really isn't much of a thought one that in, involves some sort of existential confirmation bias would be to completely ignore that right or to mm-hmm. be able maybe even to fall into despair either of those may not be but the real thought would be how do i how am i in this moment with what is given to me and how can i accommodate it how can i be truly embrace and do a dance with both the body the internal and the external world that i'm a part of and you could literally see him sort of grapple that with that as he was talking you know, how to be uh yala maso who i think is pretty near state near death at this point uh, mm-hmm. has written a series of articles about how you know he is uh, attempting to be able to stay alive while he's alive and how that requires you know some balance between these assimilative notions and these accommodations um, it, it could be that confirmation existential confirmation bias at his stage of life could either keep him alive or it could doom him from being able to be alive when he dies I don't know mm-hmm.